Hi everyone, I'm going to be connecting with uh, the Arctic Sunrise ship that is currently in the Indian Ocean and I'm going to be talking to Sharma Sanduya, which I'm very excited about. I'm just going to pin that comment to let everyone know who I'm talking to. Okay, let's get Sharma on here. Just to let everyone know too, because they're currently on the ship, uh, there may be some issues with the internet connection because they are actually in the middle of a storm. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Shama. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for yourself. Very good. Thank you. So excited to be talking to you. I hope we are um, able to keep our connection. And yeah, I would love for you just to introduce yourself and, and let everyone know where you're speaking from um, and yeah all right so i'm sharma and i'm from mauritius so right now i'm with greenpeace and the arctic sunrise we are in the middle of the indian ocean we're here at the side of Mala. so it's a really nice place where we have the world's largest ecosystem and we're here on, an, on a scientific expedition to look at the biodiversity the ecosystem and to raise awareness about its importance because um, it's a really nice place and we have so many marine lives, marine animals here and the seafloor is covered with the seagrass so it's really exciting to be here right now and we've been here for like three weeks now so yeah great um, and I'd love to yeah hear a bit more about your activism within Mauritius. I know that you were one of the people that were really behind the initiators of Fridays for the Future at Mauritius. And I would just love to hear about what kind of called you and led you to um, to that role um, and, and sort of what's happening in Mauritius. So basically, um, I started like uh, doing activism when I started my studies at the University of Mauritius because mm -hmm. I was choosing marine sciences and um, while studying that, I got in touch a bit more about the climate crisis and um, how it was affecting us in Mauritius because unfortunately, many people, they are affected by the climate crisis, but they don't know it. So um, going through that, I... I was really angry at seeing that there was no concrete action we got, uh, with respect to the climate crisis and that uh, in Mauritius because we are we're like a tropical island so we have like heat waves a lot mm -hmm. and these heat waves they are very bad because they affect our crops but they also affect, affect our corals and we have many bleaching events in Mauritius so it means that the corals are bleached and dead and this affect the ecosystem, so the fish they go away, and our artisanal fishermen, our local fishermen, they can no longer fish, and our diving centers they can no longer do divings properly. So um, it's all these things that are affecting us. Right now we're having um, like a dry season. Well, it was mm -hmm. since October we've had dry season. Um, it's very unusual for us, but it's getting worse with the climate crisis. Mm -hmm. So in 2019, with other youths in Mauritius, we started protesting to demand concrete climate actions from the government, from the private companies, from the leaders around the world, because um, islands do not emit most greenhouse gases, but they are the most, I mean, they're the most exposed to the consequences of the climate crisis. So we've been raising awareness about it. Oops. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> We've been raising awareness about it and we've been um, demanding concrete action. So we've been protesting in Mauritius, we've written letters to, to the Prime Minister, we've written letters to the, to, to the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. So um, we're, we're still waiting for them to act, but right now, we're at the side of Mala, we know that this ecosystem is important and not only... Oh, I can't hear you, I think. The... I can't hear you. I think the phone is maybe under the microphone. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, we've tried to like raise awareness a bit more about the climate crisis in Mauritius because um, it's the local communities, the vulnerable communities that are being affected. The farmers, the fishermen, the diving centers, the skippers. 
they they all witness bleaching events they all witness um issues with nature right now and uh, well i mean many people know that they are suffering from the climate crisis the mm -hmm. consequences of it but they don't really know what's the climate crisis so we've tried to explain to them why we're getting that and um the indian ocean so basically the seagrass here it's not only good for for the for the islands it's not only good for the indian ocean but it's good for the planet mm -hmm. and uh yeah we just hope that this area can be protected yeah great and is there what have you witnessed whilst you're you know on on the ship about obviously i'm sure had the opportunity to see some amazing marine life uh there and i think when you're in these kind of Can you hear me? So um, we've been carrying out some sighting surveys around the ship, and mm -hmm. we've tried to like um, get some cameras in the water and see what's going on. So we've mm -hmm. spotted some amazing marine fauna here. We've spotted like. Oh, I think we're having a problem a little bit with the connection. Let's hope we reconnect. Can everyone see both of us? Oh, I've lost them. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get them hopefully back on. One second. So I would love to talk a bit more about what we can do uh, as listeners watching to, to help um, conserve the ocean and protect coastal communities that Sharma has been talking about. So let's see if we get her back. Oh, hi. Back. Yeah, so I'd love to just flip it around to uh, so the viewers can know a little bit more about what they could possibly be doing um, to sort of raise awareness and also their support for coastal communities and maybe a little bit too about the sort of protecting our oceans through an oceans treaty. Well, first of all, Greenpeace is campaigning already for the protect the oceans. So mm -hmm. it would be really nice if more people could get on board with it and sign the petition. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I think that we can all do something to, to combat the climate crisis. For example, we could just reduce our carbon emissions. We could just take actions or demand our governments or demand um, the companies to take actions because at the end of the day, they are the ones that can make a change, like a significant change quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, basically there's that and uh, and yeah, I mean, I mean, we're all trying to do our best, but at the end of the day, it would be really nice if we could ask our leaders to act as well. Definitely, yeah. I think we can all do our individual things, but until policy is there to protect us and the planet, it's it's quite hard for sort of big systemic change and i think too as you were saying before you know you have mainlands that are producing a lot of uh, emissions and then you have um, communities that are producing less and they may be more out of sight out of mind to people but they're being affected first so i think it's yeah trying to i think trying to enable people to see and understand those stories is often what's really important through through this work and through talking is just trying to tell that story so people can like imagine people um, in these communities and, and where you are now, rather than thinking it's not going to affect us. Yeah, bringing it home. And um, what would you say, yeah, about the link between, I mean, we spoke a bit about how you're saying that there's like temperature changes that have affected kind of coral reefs and things like that, but how could people understand a little bit more about like how kind of climate shifting and changing in our emissions is what is affecting the oceans and how to like we rely actually more than we think on the health of the ocean for our own health whether that's kind of um through sustenance or whether that's through how much it sequesters carbon so that we can breathe and things like that all right so basically um for example we've been here at the side of Mala, so we've seen um, some corals growing uh, in the seagrass patches. So that's really exciting to see mm -hmm. corals growing in a completely different ecosystem. But we've also seen some bleached corals, some dead corals. 
So we know that the Indian Ocean's temperature has been rising significantly since since decades now, and it's heating up quickly because it's surrounded by land mostly. So, um, so it could be possible that these rising temperatures also affected the corals here. And that's just a remote area. It's really remote, so it's not affected as much as the coral reefs that are found near coastal regions, near land. So even that, they were... So even that, they were bleached and they are dead. So in Mauritius, for example, and even in Seychelles, because they also faced several El Nino events. So mm -hmm. basically what happens is that the corals, they undergo so, many, so much stress that um, the algae that lives inside the corals, they just go away. So this mm -hmm. is why it becomes white. And when it becomes white, um, it can no longer uh, live and it's under stress again, and it can die soon. So when corals die, the fish no longer go there. So they mm -hmm. go away from it, and the life disappears from it. It's just more algae coming in and and uh, covering the, the corals. So basically, that's one thing. And the second thing we know is that um, for seagrasses, for example, they, they take up the carbon from the atmosphere 35 times faster than tropical rainforest. So that's mm -hmm. amazing. I mean, this mm -hmm. ecosystem, we cannot see them every day. We cannot see them everywhere on the planet. But still, they're really good. They capture the carbon from the atmosphere, and then they keep it in the seabed. So that's very nice to know. But unfortunately, these ecosystems, they are threatened as well, and we need to protect them. So um, we need to be able to understand how the ocean is really important for the local communities, because mm -hmm. they get the food from it. And at the same time, it's being... Um, Threatened by the climate crisis, so all that makes a link, all that makes a chain. Uh, so it's really important to to like understand how the local communities are being affected by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I, I know a few people asked like, what's uh, basically changing this, and it is just like a global so, temperature. Yeah. But tell me, tell me about you. Yeah, so I've been on the ship that you're on, what the is Arctic right Sunrise. Side of the planet. Yeah, so I've been on the ship you're on, the Arctic Sunrise, a couple of years ago with Greenpeace. And ever since that trip, I've been just so inspired to take action within my daily life and see how I can shift and change habits and, and just help and see how my curiosity to sort of understand the situation more and like my role within it has led me to sort of branch out just from single use plastics and look at kind of all other um, topics under the kind of large umbrella that is um, the environment um, and just trying to yeah have conversations like this so we can share the story to other people so people can kind of understand the global picture and how deeply woven we all are into this issue and how it's not going to take you know individuals it's going to take a whole movement which I think is what's great about Fridays for Future and movements like that and yeah I think it's this dual approach that Greenpeace really has this this individual approach that what we do really matters and trying to empower the individual but then also this like other huge major approach which is like we were saying policy making sure the policy protects us and also holding big corporations and government yeah, big corporations and brands accountable to to you know not enabling us to take all the responsibility as the consumers when they kind of have a lot of power to to shift things whether that is say with plastics you know if, if that's to shift to a more kind of circular economy to shift to more kind of less single-use plastics more kind of refilling ideas you know just there are different there are a lot of ways we could like design ourselves out of this problem you know there's a lot of great solutions out there that just need to be scaled and they need to be supported um and so yeah i mean just even a solution like coral reef sequestering carbon that's like a hugely powerful tool that we need so just realizing how important those kind of great natural systems are that we need to support yeah, so yeah lots to do yeah. Yeah. yeah and how long are you on the ship are we you see there from here how long are you on the ship for now? Sorry, I didn't hear you. How much longer are you on the ship for, for this research trip? Okay, so we've been here for already three weeks now, and we have like um, a few days left, and then mm -hmm. in a week we're disembarking. 
So it has been really nice so far. The sea was was pretty calm, but now it's getting rough. <laughs> yeah. And we're kind of like uh, pitching a bit, but uh, it's been great. And it was really nice for, for all the work that we had to do here because um, we couldn't we couldn't have done it if the weather went bad. So mm -hmm. that's very good. I mean, we we were capable of collecting so much data. And that's really interesting for us because it hasn't been done here before and mm -hmm. we absolutely want to know the the biodiversity here um the kind of life we can see the ecosystem in what state they are etc so it's it's just such a good a good thing that we were capable of doing all that yeah that's great that's very lucky <laughs> just at the last few days well it has been really really lovely to be in conversation with you and to know more about what inspired you and what led you to be where you are and i hope you have a really great rest of your trip and i'm going to in the comments after i post this just leave the petition so people can sign up and i would also inspire people to look up like the local chapter of greenpeace where they're listening from you know if you you know you could be in brazil and there's greenpeace brazil you could be in the uk and there's greenpeace uk there's just so many different uh chapters of greenpeace that can help you to take action Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank have you so a much wonderful for, for allowing us to talk about it. Yeah, it's been great. And have a great rest of your trip. And I hope the storm calms soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye.